I mean, those are just a couple of interesting notes about um, Matt and, you know, the weather and the fact that he was, you have to hitchhike or ride public transportation. So um, before I go into kind of what people think happened, what do you, what do you think happened, Joe? Um, going through just like our top ones that we always mention, I don't believe it's animals at all. Okay. Uh, nothing leaning towards animal. Um, I'm like between where I'd rate exposure and serial killer. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I'm yeah. like, cause I, for someone that experienced, I would say, even if he got caught up in a rainstorm or something yeah, with his backpack, with experience, he could figure shelter out and then hike out. Mm-hmm. the next day um, versus getting picked up. And when I say serial killer, I'd say foul play. So I'll just, yeah. I'll change it to foul play, like getting picked up by somebody he shouldn't have been or whatever. Um, I'd say that's the next most likely. Those to me are all like 10% chance-ish yeah. type stuff, not big likely. Honestly, I think the biggest thing that could have happened is that he did what he said he was going to do. He's He took his crampons. Yeah. He's going on snow and ice. The biggest threat that scares me the most personally when I go anywhere with snow and ice, crevasse. Mm -hmm. If he didn't have any gear at all, if he stepped on a crevasse, that's it. Yeah. It's and that's that's like even if somebody knew the area you're in, they talk about there'll be people that are in a group traversing a crevasse and they're not roped up and somebody falls down and they're unable to find the one he fell in and they saw him. It's so difficult. It's like needle in a haystack. That's just what I've heard from search and rescue people. Um, unfortunately I think that's probably it. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to cross a snow field in the Tetons. It was probably a hundred yards long and it was on a very sloped mountainside and I didn't have any, any gear to cross a snow field. And I took it like as slow as you can possibly walk leaning to the side. Cause if I slipped, it was going to be like a 500 foot tumble down jagged rocks on like a, yeah, probably like an angle like this. Yeah, just not fun. <laughs> no. Um, so, so yeah, I'll go into kind of what um, I I got from my research. So, first off, the Mammoth Lakes Police Department uh, ruled out any foul play. It didn't go into detail why, but um, when I was first doing this, I was like, maybe do you, maybe the, the owner of the, the car shop was a suspect, but he was ruled out early on, and he actually um, – there were some reports that he actually helped in the search. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't him. Was there somebody at the campground that was involved in foul play? But again, the police interviewed everyone that was staying at the campground and they all checked out according to the, you know, law enforcement officials. So, you know, they don't think it was foul play. Mm -hmm. Uh, they ruled out suicide. Um, so Matt did not have any financial troubles. Uh, he was single and he showed no signs of depression. Um, when his friends last saw him in Mammoth, uh, Jill said he was in his normal optimistic self. Uh, and, you know, that's not always um, – a lot of times people that have, you know, some mental health issues don't outwardly show it to friends and family until, you know, it's Yeah, too I've late. heard stories of where it's been proven that that's happened and people like, I, I it never yeah. would have guessed. So, yeah, it doesn't rule it out, but based on – He's doing that stuff. That doesn't seem like a trip you go on to 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 off yourself. So I would argue that. That's yeah, he just spent weeks, uh, you know, climbing peaks and doing all these amazing hikes. I don't yep. get the impression that he went out there to commit suicide. Agree. <laughs> so, um, that was ruled out by uh, law enforcement. Um, they ruled out animal attack. Um, their biggest thing they said there's no grizzlies. Uh, in that area, and as we've stated before, <laughs> not in that area or the entire state of California. No grizzlies are in California. They've been expatriated out of there <laughs> yeah. in the forties or something. Uh, so, no animal attack. Um, some of the media floated the theory of a kidnapping. So, maybe he was h- hitchhiking and a crazy guy picked him up. I feel like that could just be the media being the media. Yeah, like kinda... wanting a little bit more of uh, some spice to a story. So, I I would give that like a. Five percent chance, yeah. Five to ten. Yeah, I wouldn't rule it out, but, but yeah, yeah, I can't rule it out. And the <laughs> overall opinion of law enforcement, search and rescue, family and friends was he was planning to hike the Ritter Range, and like we stated earlier in the episode, it's a very challenging area to hike and climb, and even experienced climbers could fall 
to their death. And, um, you know, family went on to say that he, he didn't really have the proper equipment to last out there overnight. He had very little food and water. Um, and even the most strong, even the strongest hiker, if they don't have the proper gear and they get injured, they're not going to survive long, um, you know, maybe three to five days best case scenario, depending on your injury. Um, so I think 80%, 90% chance that, you know, 99% of the climbs he's done went fine and something happened. Maybe he lost his concentration for a second and slipped or maybe, uh, yeah, I mean, he misjudged his footing on a snowfield and, See, that's it. That's, I would have probably said fall while climbing, but he didn't bring any of that gear. Yeah. So I totally think he was just hiking. And I wonder if that's one of the cases where, like you said, he does all these really difficult ones all the time to him. This is an easy snow field. I'm just going to cross real quick and then maybe guard down a little bit and then boom. My guess is he probably went off trail. Uh, he, Especially if he's taking a picture he brought his camera with. Maybe he's trying to go get a cool shot. He may have gone off trail to go scope out some new climbing routes. Um, you know, who knows what, what he was doing, but I think, you know, good chance that he, maybe he went off trail and he wasn't familiar maybe with the, f- the area he was walking in and something happened where he lost his footing and fell into an area that they just weren't able to find him based on the pictures we saw of this location that w- could easily happen. And based on my research reading forums about this area where hikers and climbers have talked, it's, you know, very treacherous, very steep. Uh, this volcanic rock, if you've ever hiked on that stuff, I've hiked on volcanic rock in uh, Hawaii. And it, it, if you fell onto it, not from very high up, it would really do some damage. Like my boots got shredded up from just walking on the stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think unfortunately that he probably suffered some kind of accident, you know, by falling. And I think it did him in that he, they weren't able to start the search and rescue operation sooner. Um, especially if yeah. he, he got lost or injured before those storms happened, they were having flash floods up in the mountains and he'd already fallen I mean, that could have washed his remains somewhere that they'll never find. Or some sort of uh, immobilizing injury. Yeah. If you're, okay, he's injured, maybe he's trying to crawl up, and then you add in a couple days of rain, yeah. hypothermia, he's up in the snow fields, gets wet. Yeah. That That's where time would have been yep. on his side. So, yeah, I think unlike um, a couple of cases we recently did, I think this one's a little more... Uh, cut and dry on what I think happened to him. Yeah, I, I'm very confident. I agree with you on that. That's it's something that related. Yeah. So um, interesting story.